On a horrific day for the stock market, let's remember that not everything is getting annihilated. Some stocks actually managed to rally rather like crazy. Take Domo. It's a very small speculative cloud-based software provider that came public over the summer in one of CNBC's disruptors back in 2017. Their operating system lets a business connect its employees with the real-time data and intelligence that they need to make decisions. Then it gives them the ability to enact these decisions via their smartphones. Think of it like this. Domo's platform allows a CEO to manage their whole enterprise from the phone by digitally connecting all the people, all the data, all the systems in the organization. Now, Domo came public in late June, and after a big first-day spike, its stock went into free fall. So the smaller cloud names fell out of favor with Wall Street Fashion Show. But lately, the group's been bouncing, and today, Domo caught fire, defying the gravitational pull of the averages to rally more than 30% single session. Why? Company reported a truly blowout quarter. Bullish guidance, putting any potential worries to bed. There were never were any for me, but this market's tough. Still, this is a very special a small cap stock, as I said. So let's dig deeper with Josh James. He's the founder and chairman and CEO of Domo to learn more about his company and his prospects. Mr. James, welcome to Man Money. Great. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, just have a seat. Now, I happen to know Josh from the days when I started the street.com, and he, he uh, built a company called Omniture and sold it for a great price to Adobe. So and this is not your first rodeo. Omniture Cup. I, I haven't uh, seen I one of those in well, years. Well, I haven't because I never forgot how helpful you were, <laughs> and you cared about small cap people, not just big cat people, That's but right. you are having tremendous success here with this new company, including uh, maybe you can tell me what you do for uh, a Target or a Sephora, because that may be the most accessible of the things you've got going. Yeah, actually, Target's a good one. It's pretty fun talking to them and seeing how this started in one little department, and then it started spreading and spreading and spreading. Next thing you know, then expand. 10,000 people are using the product. Really? And the CEO... They would often, their CXOs will often tell us the CEO is using it every day. So Brian Cornell is actually looking to see how he's doing. I heard it's like a little party trick. He walks into a Target store as a secret shopper, pulls out his phone. He knows exactly what's selling in that store as of that day compared to all the other stores. What's selling well, what's not selling well. And he can walk around and and, uh, see how that's being merchandised. Nobody else has that. That I know of. No one else has that. Now, I know at one point in your conference call, uh, you said, I really like this. I thought it was very good. You said, we're dramatically underpricing uh, the value of the product. And <laughs> I, I, Now, why would you do that? Why not charge some price that you can be more be profitable instantly? Well, I think if we were doing a better job, stock would probably be a little bit higher. That's one thing. So we need to work <laughs> on that. But I think, you know, at the beginning, you're just trying to find customers that will use the right. product at scale. Right. And now that we've got those customers... We're starting to, we've gone in and really showed them the whole architecture. This was, this is really seven startups in one. We raised almost a billion dollars. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. And so we are building all it's these products. It's a half a billion dollar market cap, because so you could be a bargain. It, it is a bargain. Right. Because you can't do this unless you put all these things together. You can't have the CEO pull his phone out and have real-time data at scale unless you put all these things together. You can't buy this and buy that and try to bailing wire and duct tape this thing together. Well, Josh, you did you do it, or you just have a, a good team of people like you had at Omniture? Yeah, a great team of people. A lot of the same people from Omniture, oh, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually that all that technical. I just know what it can do. I right. was going to college when the Internet was started. So. Okay, but let me ask you. You have a line in your conference call which says, People are trying to differentiate you, I imagine, from like a Tableau data or something. And you say, most cases, we're trying to solve something they can't figure out how to solve. Now, that's a pretty bold comment, Josh. What do you mean by that? Can really, yeah. the other day, tap, I hired Tableau data, the smart guys, they can't do what you do? No, I mean, this, this has to do with cloud. So, I mean, you're big on cloud. Right. Yes, I am. This is cloud. When we were doing cloud at Omniture, we were the first ones to do it. That's because absolutely we did it true. Cloud, not, it was that is scale. not hyperbole, because that's where I learned the cloud from you. So, same thing. We're, we're talking now, like, I had a customer. I just saw a customer. CIO walks up to me afterwards. Chief it's Information a, Officer. It's a, it's a, you know, top 200 company in the world. And he comes up to me and says, oh, I'm a customer of yours. Like, oh, great. I got a question for you. We own 90,000 ice cream machines, vending machines. Is there any way you can take the data off those, do some predictive analytics, and tell us how we should, which, which product we should put in your base and which month and what's selling? Oh, that is so valuable. So that once is. they start getting the data, they, their, their mind starts opening up. So it's a platform. Does that mean it could be integrated with a Salesforce.com's platform, or is it your oh, yeah. own? Yeah, we have over 1,000 different connectors, do. systems we connect into. Salesforce is one of our top five. Is it? Connected to. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Mark Benioff uh, emails you in the middle of the night saying, listen, I got an idea. Mark says jump. I generally jump. Uh, yeah, we all do. <laughs> and just kidding. You have to. I'm a, I'm a TV person. I don't have to do anything. What is Domo Palooza? Domo Palooza, I was, you know, basically trying to entertain myself, right? So uh, you go to all these boring conferences, and you're talking about boring things. 
And it's like, no, we're going to have a great time. We're going to do some great business. And then we're going to have a little bit of fun, you know, after hours. That's so, a Domo Palooza. That's a Domo Palooza. Okay, the last thing I wanted to ask you, you are fully funded, as I understand it, so that it's not like, yes, even though it's a small cap stock, you're burning some cash. I don't have to worry for the foreseeable future because you got all the money. That well, listen, that's the worry. That's the worry we hear from what? investors. Exactly. You're going to run that's out of money. That's why I mentioned it. And I'm like, uh, I've done this before. Right. I took the dilution on the IPO. I know. I didn't raise the money to run out of money. So I wanted to really reiterate that and be like, guys, we've got enough. The business is doing well. We're absolutely going to get to cash flow positive without having to raise another dime. Well, I am so glad you came on the show. You've done so many great things. And I really want to congratulate you for Domo. Great yes, quarter. Sir, sir. Okay, that's Josh James. He's Domo's founder, chairman, and CEO. Very accessible story. Just go read the conference call. Look at the data. And I think you'll enjoy it as much as I do. May have money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.